So first I want to thank Fernando for the invitation. <coughs> so <coughs> So what I will be doing is a nonlinear analog of the following. So we take a compact manifold with no boundary. And uh, well, let, let's take a positive scalar curvature. We take a point. Yeah. So then if we look at uh, the conformal Laplacian, so this is the Hessian. Uh, the Laplacian plus a dimension constant. So this is a conformal Laplacian. So, and uh, we take take a point, and we will have a Green's function. So, so the Green's function will be like one over r is the distance to the pole to the n minus two say 1 plus next order term. Well, for this, uh, so first this g is there exists such a g and unique. And also here, there is a positive mass theorem. So, well, let, let's simply state it like 3D, n equal to 3. So what that says is uh, we take the negative scalar curvature. So uh, if you write this Green's function like 1 over r plus a constant plus high order term, so then you know that this a has to be greater or equal than 0, and equality uh, if and only if. So Sn, uh, this, this m, g, is conformal to standard 3 sphere. So what I will describe here is involves a Schalten tensor. So this AG is 1 over some constant, Ricci. So scalar curvature, actually modular uh, harmless constant, positive constant, will be the eigenvalue of this tensor with respect to the metric. So these are eigenvalues. And uh, so in a way that instead of here uh, looking at scalar curvature Rg, we look at the tensor. We look at things as tensors. And uh, so we will, maybe I'll write it closer, right? So, <coughs> so this is our end. This is where the eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda n uh, will stay. So we are going to look at a cone like this. So gamma belongs to Rn, is an open convex symmetric with vertex equal to 0. 
by symmetric, I mean if lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n in it, a permutation of that will still belong to the cone. And we assume that this gamma belongs to gamma 1. So this is the half plane where the sigma lambda i is positive. So So it's on this side. So this is going to be the boundary of gamma 1. And it contains the positive cone. So this is like the first quadrant. You look at it gamma like this. So, so here, uh, Rg is equal to 0. That's the same as saying the eigenvalues belongs to boundary of gamma 1. So because we are taking the trace, then the trace uh, should belong here. So we'll be looking at a uh, the equation, uh, more general than that, is this. So we look at we look at a conformal metric. So here, g u, we write as u to this power and g. So we start from a background metric g. We look look at conformal, and then we look at the equation. Is belongs to boundary of gamma, and you look for a positive solution, and we look at m minus a couple of points. So these points will be like there. We take one point, there we can take a couple of points as well. So, <coughs> so this is the equation, and if take this belongs to the boundary of gamma 1, and we have exactly the equation uh, conformal Laplacian equal to that. Yeah, that's the equation. So, <coughs> so we look for solution so that at each pole, the rate, so I should raise n minus 2, and this u of x, and that's ci bigger than zero. So this will be the uh, strength of the pole. So we are going to, <coughs> at each pole, so we are going to look at a couple of points with prescribed strengths and to see whether or not you can solve that equation. So that's what we will be doing. So we, we will call this a Green's function uh, with poles here and we strength ci. And as mentioned earlier, if gamma equal to gamma 1, that's exactly there. So, uh, so this gamma, uh, so first, uh, gamma equal to gamma k are uh, important examples for this. What do I mean by that? So you first, you look at the case elementary symmetric function. So this is elementary symmetric function. And you take gamma k to be the component of sigma k positive containing the positive cone. So if, if all lambda i po positive, certainly sigma k is going to be positive. And, and that gamma k is going to be like that. Yeah. So these are uh, important examples <coughs> 
for each such gamma, for each gamma, so we introduce a number. So this number is defined by minus mu gamma 1, and the 1 belongs to the boundary of gamma. So that's because, uh, let's say, so here I take 1 here, I go up 1, 1, I drop one coordinate down, I will hit here. So that will be my minus mu gamma. So. Uh, uh, it is clear, easy to see, that this mu gamma plus uh, equal to n minus 1 is the same as this gamma equal to gamma 1, and mu gamma k is equal to n minus k divided by k. And therefore, uh, it's going to be equal to 1 at a half dimension, and uh, it's going to be bigger than 1 if k is less than n over 2 is going to be less than 1 if k bigger than n over 2. So our theorems will be in terms of this number. So, so the assumption is maybe I come. All right. So uh, we assume MG is compact, no boundary and n is greater or equal than 3. And we assume that gamma is given there. And uh, initially, we start with the assumption that the eigenvalues of the shortened tensor belongs to gamma. Okay. So for every point, p1, pm, belongs to m m greater or equal to 1. And for any strength, so if mu gamma plus is bigger than 1, there exists Green's function u belongs to C0 loc m minus s. So I'm going to denote this as s, singular points, uh, with strength ci. And this is unique. So with strength means that limit uh, is CI. And moreover, this U is actually C11. So the uniqueness is within the C0 uh, viscosity solution, the solution we can produce is a C11. So second, if this number is less or equal than 1, such solution does not exist.
unless this m is standard Sn, and the little m is equal to 1, and the solution is obvious. Okay. Using a projection, a stereographic projection to Rn, we are talking about uh, 1 over r to the n minus 2 is the solution of Laplacian. So more, yeah. so more, uh, more or less, oh, well, the equation is, anyway, so that, that, that's, that's it. So it's obviously there is a solution there. And uh, if we look at this, this means that if you look at it as for gamma k, that means for k less than n over 2, there is such an object. Okay? If k greater or equal than n over 2, there's no such object in C0 class. So <laughs> well, uh, well, so the, the following question we don't know. So uh, one can say question, uh, smoothness of u, higher regularity of u. So whether one has C2, C3, C4, etc. Of course, this equation uh, is not so good. So definitely, you do not expect local solution has higher regularity. That's determined would not have that, because this is a degenerate equation. The equation we have in the determinant case more or less like determinant of the Hessian equal to 0. On the other hand, globally, uh, we don't know. So uh, there, for instance, in this, in this direction, there is a work of Lampert which says Green's function for degenerate Monchamp pair equations are smooth. So that's a certainly a global uh, thing. So whether or not we, there is such a thing, we don't know for this equation. OK. So the second theorem, so also, so this somehow says, uh, so, so somehow says there's some third measure uh, associated with that. So let's say for k less than n over 2. And uh, for the Green's function, for u in theorem 1. So namely, uh, in the case, there is such a u, and uh, that's the Green's function. So there exists uj, a sequence of smooth ones, such that uj converges to u uh, in LQ for any Q less than n over n minus 2, and also in C1 alpha log for every alpha less than 1. So it can be approximated by smooth functions.
And uh, when we look at, we insert these smooth functions for sigma k. So we normalize this by uj raised to this power. So this is bounded in L1. And weakly converges to a sum of delta measure. Okay. So, so in that sense, uh, it's like a, a Green's function. Okay. <coughs> So maybe I will uh, say a few words about the motivation. So, uh, so, so, so one of the motivations are we are interested in looking at the following problem. So this is the so-called sigma k Yamabe problem. In the case k greater or equal than 2 and less than n over 2. And uh, we would like to know whether or not one can have a priori estimates. So you assume that you have a solution to this equation whether or not you can show that u is going to be less than a constant. So, well, once if you can establish, th once this can be established, then by uh, known estimates, which have been developed for during many years, then one will have existence results by a degree argument. Okay, so so for for this problem, for this uh, sigma k Yamabe problem, there have been many works here. Uh, so I'm not going to list all of them. So 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 this is Jeff Wierkowski and Alice Powell and Matt Gursky. <coughs> so they started looking at uh, things uh, on this and also closely related to that. OK. So and uh, for k equal to 1, And uh, so that's the Yamabe problem. So, so this is yes if n less or equal than 24 and no, no in general if n greater or equal than 25. And this is the beautiful result of Fernando. Curry and Rick Shane. And uh, this one is by uh, Fernando and, uh, and uh, Brando. So, so these are uh, around 2009. Well, so in a way that it has been for some time, uh, my collaborator and I have been trying to get 
this. Yeah. So, it, uh, so is it possible to be true for all dimension or for some dimension? So far, uh, we are working on it. So maybe I will, so we are working on it in a way that we, fir we first try to see uh, strategies for Yamabe, whether uh, one can uh, uh, get through uh, with uh, enough estimates, things like this. So let's, uh, so what the situation, <coughs> so, so let's recall for the Yamabe problem and uh, for the compactness part. So one crucial ingredient for the Yamabe problem is this positive mass. So, so therefore, uh, I will comment on a possible uh, counterpart for the sigma k case. So, so, so it enters, one can say, in such a way that, let's say, suppose you have a sequence of solution for the Yamabe problem, and there is a blow up. So, so then uh, one works, and to show that uh, there are finite blow up points. So this, this need to be proved, and, and this is an essential part for compactness. And uh, well, once it's uh, finite blow up points, so you take, roughly you take one of them, and you normalize it this way. So we are going to see that uh, it's going to be converging to a linear combination of that. Yeah. Ci will be non-negative. Yeah. So, 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 so the Green's function, this is the Green's function, uh, will, after normalizing, if you have, well, this will, so things will be in appropriate tubular neighborhood of this thing. So you, you can, you know that. So, and then here, positive mass theorem tells you that uh, this is one over, well, you have to prove that, you know, uh, while tensor up to a minus six derivative will vanish and so on. So, and, and then the mass will be well defined and uh, you are going to see positive unless you are on the sphere. <coughs> and then you proceed, you, you will prove that. So, so, the, so what we would like to first try to understand this sigma k Yamabe compactness uh, for k less than that is to try to see uh, whether or not one can uh, follow through that or, uh, or else. Yeah. So, First, if we look at this part, so, so certainly we, at the moment we do not know finite point blow up. We do not have a proof. Well, the, for this part, if it's locally conformally flat, so, and also with, with my, uh, with green, so in that case, uh, you have a local statement. So suppose you are, your equation is on unit bore, you don't need any boundary condition, then if it blows up, you go to half of the bore, you will know that you have a few finitely many points, and each point is a standard bubble, so sublift bubble. So, so this picture have, has been proved and with comparable strengths, of, and of course when you normalize, you end up with something like this. So, and uh, uh, this picture has been proved for locally conformally flat, and we are trying to have picture like this for non-locally conformally flat, but so far we don't have a, a, a result to, to report yet. So let's, let's assume when you go through that, so you have that, you take this, and then you would end up with something which will be like that object. 
will be like this object. So this theorem says that at least there is indeed such an object right? in the case exactly here. You do have such an object. Uh, if, if, if one doesn't even have such an object, and that's, that will be another uh, one has to adjust thing, attempt a little bit. So this theorem says, yes, we do have such an object. And uh, next is about the positive mass part. Well, for the positive mass part, well, one can introduce uh, here uh, you have a positive mass because when you uh, take G and you look at the conformal metric, so that's going to open here like that, and it's going to be asymptotically flat, and uh, you are going to see a mass. Okay. To be able to do that, one can see that you, one needs to have a very good control of this G. One has to expand it, say, you will see wild tensor and derivatives, and you will be able to, you know. So, so, so that requires a good understanding of the Green's function, for which we are only having C11 so far. So that's also something which needs to be addressed. And how about the, suppose you, you are able to control those, and uh, for instance, in locally conformally flat case, and uh, in locally conformally flat case, uh, uh, yes, there is a mass. Uh, uh, mass is okay. Mass actually is greater or equal than zero, and it also has a rigidity. So, uh, you see an earlier paper here. maybe like 2014. So this is only locally conformally flat. So maybe I should describe that. And there is some uh, difference there, a very, very different thing there uh, comparing, to the, uh, comparing to the Yamabe problem. In the locally conformally flat case, so we have a Bosch theorem. And uh, ah, I shouldn't say I have all this. Let me see. Uh, but, but well, in the local, I, I'll state something in <laughs> the locally conformally flat. Locally conformally flat uh, together with something. So it's uh, OK. So if it's locally conformal flat, for example, you have the following statement. So so that certainly has been a while, uh, but it, it's written somewhere. I didn't prepare much. Uh, OK, so in the locally conformal flat case, So in the locally conformally flat case, it's like this. So let's say that uh, we look at the case, this mu gamma. I, I will only restrict that case. Okay, There are results in the paper for other cases. So that means k less than n over 2. And I assume that this number is on the boundary of gamma. So I assume this too. So, so, so for the Laplacian, uh, this is not there. So, so what we state will not be true. So this cover, so this state, this cover exactly up to two. So then we look at, we look at the lambda of the u, four to the n minus two, this g Euclidean. So we, we assume that belongs to the boundary of that gamma in a punctured ball. So certainly u is positive. So this is a, in a punctured ball. So like harmonic function, positive function, harmonic function in a punctured ball. So then 
that will imply that u of x is going to be equal to a constant divided by x mu minus 1 plus a next function bounded. So holder continues, for example. So now we should have more regularity. So anyway, you are going to write it like this. So this a is greater or equal than 0. This w0 is greater or equal than 0 in the ball, puncture ball. And if w0 x bar equal to 0, for some x bar, then w0 identically equal to 0. So, so, so this mu is equal to this mu gamma. This is exactly the number. So mu is bigger than 1. So, uh, so what does that say? It says the local, if you only did need to be defined by local, and this, this is the mass position, is already non-negative. And it's equal to 0 if and only you just don't have it. Yeah. So that's the reason we have rigidity, because of this statement. Yeah. Once you touch 0 a little bit, uh, anywhere, it's just gone. Locally, you will be having that precisely that. Again, we would like to move this thing to non-locally conformally flat, and, and all these uh, are all, we, they are all require uh, estimates. They, they are more very much connected. So, so our estimates now are not strong enough to give those yet, uh, but enough to give this. This also requires estimates. So, so I will. <coughs> so the the paper should be written up uh, not too long from now. So I will not get into all technical details. So I will I will not to. So it's, I think it's better not to do that. So I will. Describe the proof now, just by what one does. <coughs> so I will start from non existence first. So namely, this part, okay. mu gamma plus this number less or equal than 1 corresponds to gamma k and k greater or equal than n over 2. So and let's just take one singular point. So well, so we know that. These Schouten tensor eigenvalues belong to the cone. Well, this is uh, algebraic, like this matrix. And you, that implies this thing, Ricci, will be greater or equal than 0. So from now, let's assume u is smooth. If u is smooth, and uh, this is well known as follows. <coughs> So, so, so let's take GU. So let's look at GU, and uh, this is U to the 4 over m minus 2, that's G, because we assume that your u is like fundamental solution in a rather strong sense. So uh, roughly speaking, uh, we are going to see uh, something like that. So uh, well, we are basically doing this. 
So let, let me just, you know, it, it's in flat. If you do this fundamental solution, uh, you will see a plane, OK? Otherwise, we are seeing something like this. So we are going to see that if you have a manifold P here, and this is your mg, so when you do this y equal to x minus p, uh, basically you are doing this. So then you are going to see a plane at infinity, and you are going to go like this and close it. So this part is the near that. So then we are going to pick a point, q. You take a q here, and uh, you will look at b. You look at the arbor okay, of this metric, and uh, you center here, and you divide it by our Euclidean ball. You know that this is non-increasing. Non increasing. So, so we are using uh, B sharp Gromov. So, this is Euclidean ball. Okay. So, well, now, uh, now this quantity at zero certainly it goes to one, at infinity. Our assumption is asymptotically plane, so it also goes to 1. So this is going to be identically equal to 1. So that would imply, so I go up here now, so that would imply this quantity is identically equal to 1, and this Gromov Bishop, Bishop Gromov, carries a rigidity part. So it's finished. Well, so if it's not that smooth, so suppose uh, if, if this u is C11 log, uh, then the textbook proof uh, doesn't quite go through because it uses C2. So, and this was proved by Gursky and Vyakhlovsky in 2007. <coughs> so, what we need to prove here is for U in C0. So, so what we need to prove is we prove it for C0 uh, viscosity solution. For Ricci E to F, for example, G, say, greater or equal than 0. And this G is smooth. So we look at continuous conformal matrix. Okay. We, namely, our background is smooth. We want to establish a viscosity theory for continuous factors. And uh, we prove that, for instance, in this case, if you have a continuous viscosity solution, I'm not defining this, so I, I don't have much time, but you know, this is rather, uh, so, I would, so continuous viscosity solution. So we still have uh, this. For anything, if greater or equal than some standard k, so you will have this. Uh, every, every statement like this is OK, and including the rigidity. So the way we prove it is by approximation. So, so we have two things. First is volume comparison. So volume comparison uh, for continuous conformal metrics. So what we do is we first make an inf convolution. 
So we make an inf convolution for this f. So well, then we are still, it is stable under that. So of course, this requires this uh, structure of this reach. It, it, one cannot do it for any, uh, uh, any second order tensors. So, and then this inf convolution, okay, we, we make it smoother, and then followed by a convolution against a small smooth smooth kernel. So after these two approximation, one end up with the following. So we are going to see a sequence FL. This is smooth. So I'm in a local situation. So the whole thing I need is you know, basically a local situation. So you have that. And then FL goes to F in C0 sense. And if you look at the Ricci tensor level, it's greater or equal than zero in LP for finite P. So uh, there is a, a theorem by Peter Peterson and Wei. So, oh, okay under this, okay for this. So then you just pass through. So we, we invoke a result there. So I also say that then the rigidity. So there is a rigidity statement also. So for the rigidity, we are saying if you look at a continuous conformal metric, if you have monotonicity, and actually it's identical to one. They are supposed to be isometric to the to the to the Euclidean. So, and uh, this uh, one uh, can prove it directly and use some results for quasi-linear elliptic PDE. So next, I will talk about the existence and uniqueness part. So let, let us just uh, look at sigma k. Okay. Let's look at gamma k. Sigma k. For simplicity, let's just look at that. So uh, for theorem 2, ah, I just realized I need a little bit ha, more time. I didn't count this writing. So, so we, we need uh, this statement. So maybe I can write very quickly. Uh, so I can write very quickly. So, so we have this u. We have a Green's function there. Okay. So uh, we need actually to produce a Green's function. And actually, uh, it has, so I will not write, bother to write distance. So. We want this to be less or equal than uh, x minus pi, 2 minus and plus a little bit. So this is c0. Okay. This is achieved by, uh, by producing a barrier function to control c0 order. And then we need a gradient to be less than x minus pi, 1 minus n plus kappa. 
So this requires, yeah, to hand to, so this is degenerate equation. Yeah. So we are going to a, a cook up appropriate approximation to this. So we, uh, so we see two, C2 actually, we are, uh, we are not, uh, well, minus, minus, minus n, yeah. So we are getting minus n so far only. So this one uh, needs to, uh, it, this estimate is not as strong as we want, but good enough for this, yeah. So uh, we, for example, if we assume this one zero zero belongs to boundary gamma, this second derivative, we will be having uh, what we want. So plus kappa a little bit. We are missing a little bit there. So if we have that, so then many things will be. So we are still working on that. So, but this is enough for our purpose. So, so this is the, that. And uh, OK. So then how do we do it? So, <clears throat> so the equation one solves is like sigma k equal to zero. So, and. Uh, we need to look at this sigma k, and we open up a little bit. So, so we look at sigma k, and for any gamma, you can open it up a little bit, so that this 1, 0, 0 is going to be uh, in it. And lambda will belong to gamma k and t, which is 1 minus t lambda plus t sigma 1, 1, 1. So this belongs to gamma k. So for any gamma, you can have this process to open it a little bit. And then we look at the equation sigma k, t sigma will be lambda. We solve that. So you solve it minus a delta bull. Okay. And on the boundary, we so we produce this is a super solution to be produced. So with appropriate uh, approximation. So you produce a super solution and this is on the boundary. So this is a super solution to the problem. And uh, we, in order to get the estimate, we, we will get the estimate for this and pass through limit. So we need to take t delta to be equal to delta mu minus 1 over 2. Mu is the, this mu gamma thing. So epsilon delta should be delta to the mu plus 1 and k. OK, mu here is n minus k over k. So we look at this equation. Well, so first, how about the existence of solutions? Well, existence of solution, existence of solutions for sigma k, this was done by Borg one uh, quite some years ago. Nine, maybe, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and that proof uh, can uh, come to here. So the existence part. So here. The main thing also is, uh, is, so now these things are degenerate. So we need to control our estimates uh, with this v delta. So, uh, so far, I can write the estimates uh, like this. So I write down the estimates one can obtain for that. With that estimate, one can pass through limit. And, and then you, yeah. OK, I will explain uh, later. So anyway, the hard is to obtain appropriate estimates for this degenerate equation 
And uh, this V delta, actually, the, I will just write a bunch of estimates. So this will be achieved once you, are, you produce good enough super solution. So this is like a barrier. And then existing estimates will automatically, in, 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 in the right scale, will give you uh, this. So you, you, you will have this uh, uh, estimate. Even though your right hand side deteriorating, you can estimate one and second derivative. Yeah. But that's not enough for our purpose. We need to measure the difference. Okay. So one really need to measure how close this is to that. Then you can write, for example, you can write something like this. And uh, you can write Hessian v delta minus that less than uh, CR minus n plus mu minus 1, 3 over quarter. I think we want to get 1. We, we still for short a little bit. So, and this estimate is OK inside b2 delta minus b delta. Okay. Once this is enough, then you cut off. And uh, you can get your delta measure statement. So, so that's what one can get. And uh, so, so, so with this estimate, basically everything will be close to the radial picture. So all the others you treat as error terms, you will be able to get what you want. So, so one really uh, to okay. Oh, uh, uniqueness. So I should say something also about the uniqueness. So to do the uniqueness, basically, it, it relies so uniqueness. Yeah. <coughs> so the uniqueness comes from the fact that so our v delta will converge to our u. Let's say. So our v delta will be produced by this approximating. So this v delta is approaching to that. So this v delta itself serves as a strict super solution. So our constructor of our solution is being constructed by a strict super solution. Also, we can perturb this v delta as a smooth subsolution. So once we have this, so uniqueness follows uh, with standard uh, method, but basically by, uh, uh, by the definition of viscosity solution, more or less. So, so that's the uh, uh, uniqueness part. And so I will uh, stop. <laughs>